Hey, it's Spoonie, and it's time again for another update on the development of Kitten Space Agency, the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program. If this is your first time hearing about this game, I have put together a quick recap that should bring you up to speed and answer most of the basic questions that you might have that will help you follow along more easily with what's being covered in this video. If this isn't your first time seeing one of my videos, don't worry, you don't have to watch this recap again, just skip ahead to the chapter titled New Updates. First, this game is meant to be the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program 2. It is being built from the ground up on a custom framework called Brutal designed specifically for this game. Brutal gives the developers full control over just about everything and allows them to quickly experiment with new features and ideas, like shadows from moons on planets, which went from conception to proof of concept implementation in just three hours. Yes, there will be mod support. In fact, this game is being developed with mod support as a cornerstone, and everything in the game is essentially a mod itself which can be altered. The game will have multiplayer, and the groundwork for this feature is being baked into the game so that it can be more easily added when the time comes. We don't know if it will launch with this feature, but we do know that they are planning for it. The game will have interstellar travel. The game will also be DRM free, meaning you will not have to have an internet connection to play the game. The game will also, at least ideally, be free to play. This is still a little bit up in the air as the developers will obviously need to make money from the game. It may be through a pay what you want system or other voluntary support. We will have to wait for further clarification down the road, but we do know that Dean Hall very much wants this game to be released for free. While we don't have a lot of information on system requirements just yet, the game seems to already be incredibly performant, with at least some of the work being tested on a 2080 Super at 1440p, often achieving an FPS in the hundreds. This is a good sign that you probably won't need a 5090 to play this game at the higher settings with a decent frame rate. This performance boost is in part thanks to a system of rendering called spherical billboards, which swaps out pre-rendered meshes as you approach an orbital body rather than rendering them in real time you will be able to seamlessly switch from ship view to orbital view or to another ship around another body without the need for loading screens thanks to the utilization of instantiable physics and the brutal framework, which allows everything to play by its own set of rules rather than everything being tied together in a persistent scene. This also gives the modders a straightforward path to adding, editing, or completely remaking systems. And those are the key points which I hope will answer a lot of the questions those who are new to the game might have. Okay, so on to the new stuff. And oh man, is there a lot of new stuff. So much that you may want to pause right here and go and get a snack, because this might take a little bit longer to get through than it normally does. As always, I keep my videos as straight to the point as I can, but this month we were getting updates what felt like every other day. I'm not complaining, it really is awesome to see this kind of transparency from a developer, and the pace of progress for this game has overall been really impressive so far. First up was a quick image from Dean showing that they have begun testing the physics of having multiple ships in close proximity and it is said to be working perfectly. This is great because again, remember that they are using a system of instantiable physics to render in planets and ships separately. So everything is operating by its own set of rules rather than existing within a persistent scene. So the fact that this is already working is a great sign. Next, Windhoek showed us a simple spherical drag model added to the command module that has been used for testing. It is shown here falling at terminal velocity through some of the volumetric clouds by Blackrack. You can notice some slight static across the image as the craft descends through the cloud layer, and all of this just continues to look better and better. Expanding on multi-window rendering, Dean has now shown us that instruments can be popped out onto any window or screen, getting us one step closer to having a dedicated screen for instrument panels, and this is going to allow modders to do some really interesting things with widgets. And I have no doubt that at least one enthusiast out there is going to be building a flight sim-like in-home cockpit for flying missions now that that is an actual possibility. Windhoek also gave us our first look at full warp arrow braking. This shows passes at one week per second, and they explained that all parts outside of the atmosphere are utilizing Kepler's laws of planetary motion, maintaining their orbits. But while inside the atmosphere, they are being simulated with full physics accounting for drag and orbit degradation. You'll now be able to aero break seamlessly in warp. And that means I am probably going to have to improve my skills at placing heat shielding and thermal radiators. Please tell me I'm not the only one who would just spin their craft as quickly as they could to disperse heat. I really need to get better at KSP. We are also shown here this 24-hour time lapse of a geosynchronous orbit above Hawaii. Windhoek achieved this orbit manually and turned off cloud coverage to give us a better view of the terrain below. 
This is just a really cool glimpse into the gameplay and also hints that the gameplay loops are progressing very well. Moving on, Dean showed us some more progress on the nav ball and gauge UI that he has been working on. He also showed off how these can now be seamlessly undocked and moved out of the game window, and I am just a huge fan of this widget approach to the instrument and control panels within the game. We actually got a few updates this month covering the gauge rendering improvements, which are all looking really great and starting to look really polished. So we are going to have the ability to fully customize our control panels with multiple windows showing multiple angles and seamlessly switching between all of those. But what really stands out to me is again in this image where you can see a hurricane. And I have been speculating for a while now on a weather system as it was a mod in the original Kerbal Space Program. But you should stick around because there is a massive update about the weather system later on in this video. Spoiler, there are definitely going to be weather systems. <laughs> Moving on, Black Rat gave us a look at a blue sunset on Mars and explains that unlike Earth sunsets where Rayleigh scattering and wavelength dependent extinction are responsible for the sunset's colors, Mars sunsets are controlled by an entirely different mechanism where the scattering angle itself is what changes based on the wavelengths, producing different colors. These are amazing shots, but also bolster my opinion that these planets are going to be in the game. I no longer think that it is possible that this level of work is being poured into this model of the real solar system for them to just be like, well, that was a good warm up. No, instead, I expect that, as was confirmed, this will be used as the early access system. And then later on, I speculate that this will either become the starting system before you're able to make jumps to interstellar systems, or it will ultimately become one of the interstellar systems for the vanilla game experience. I really cannot believe that they would put months and months of work into all of this just to delete it. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's possible that after early access, they're just going to get rid of this system? Or do you think it will be an interstellar system or just be one of the multiple playable systems they may have in the game? In any case, the work going into the system is absolutely going to expedite the creation of any custom systems that they do. And for all we know, work already has begun on those. Up next, Windhoek shared some of the work that's been done on the RCS Attitude Controller, which can both null out rotations and track pointing at targets. We also got a glimpse into some of the engine mechanics that set KSA apart from the other space sims out there and part of that is the minimum firing times. So RCS thrusters will use small pulses to steer themselves when you are set to point towards an object or prograde or whatever. They will then wobble back and forth as a real ship would, occasionally firing to keep themselves pointed in the correct direction. This also works at full warp speeds and eventually when gyroscopes and reaction wheels are added to the game, some of this firing will be reduced. Those gyros and reaction wheels won't be nearly as powerful as the RCS thrusters though, so that means for larger, heavier ships, these small bursts are probably going to be more necessary and more noticeable. We also got an update from Blackrack going over atmosphere rendering improvements for ozone and multiple scattering. Ozone only absorbs light, unlike other atmospheres components, and it mostly absorbs green light. And we can see this here in this picture comparing with and without the ozone effect. The image on the left without ozone has a bit more of a greenish hue, whereas the image on the right has a much more natural gradient to it. We can also see this in higher altitudes where this distinct blue band appears, and this is present in actual photos from the International Space Station. And in these last two pictures, we can see the effects of multiple scattering being implemented, which shows light bouncing several times within the atmosphere instead of just once. This gives the atmosphere a much more realistic look and greatly softens the images. So as always, this is great work by Blackrack here and everyone who is working on making this game both performant and visually stunning. So we're about halfway through this update. I told you you should probably get a snack. I'm not finished. You should have gotten a snack. This month, we also got several updates that were just images or videos more than we have gotten for several months combined. And they all look really, really incredible. So I'm just gonna shut up and show these through a montage.
Next, Lynx gave us a look at the detail height maps in action and how fast it is to make edits to various terrains. These are separated via biomes, and these will help with some of the more procedural elements on planets. This procedural noise is great for adding non-repetitive detail that is sometimes limited by the resolution of a texture. These procedural elements will be used with care so that things don't start to look too much the same. Overall, planets will mostly be driven by height maps, but closer to the surface where the height map resolutions become too low is where procedural elements will really come into play. Windhoek also showed us an update on the autopilot control panel, and this is still a work in progress, but we very shortly after got an update from Dean showing this panel complete with the new UI that he has been working on. Overall, the UI just looks great while not taking away from the the real splendor of the game, which is, well, everything else that's going on. And that's exactly what you want the UI to do. Next, we also got a really cool update from Dean showing off ground tracking. This is a feature that I frankly hadn't even thought about, but it adds a whole new layer to satellites, probes, and targeted landings. It's also just a really cool feature to see exactly where your craft is and where it's going to be. This was later improved with sun shading to show you when and where your craft will be at various times of the day on the body that you're orbiting, and this will no doubt become crucial for later missions that aren't simply focused on just managing to touch down anywhere at all on a planet, which is honestly how most of my missions go. Dean also showed off one of his latest missions to Jupiter, showing the ground tracking of Jupiter, several encounters with various moons, and ultimately a rendezvous over Isle with a second craft. This again shows that the physics of multiple crafts appear to be working as intended, and also that the progress of the core gameplay loop is coming along nicely. So once colliders and a vehicle assembly bay are ready to go, along with some of the parts, this game might be ready for a very early access period. And here's to hoping that that is still planned for some time this year. Okay, so this next update is going to be the most controversial. And I am really curious what you guys have to say about this one, so let me know down in the comments what you think of this reveal of what may be the kitten models in the game. I know some people don't even want it to be kittens at all. I think having kittens is great, but it would be just as fun as any other animal. I also don't have strong feelings about the art style, which is why I am really curious what the rest of you guys think about this. We also got a quick look at some of the lighting updates thanks to Akavis showing off lighting around RCS thrusters, and this is also just looking really great. But this next update is one that I have been waiting for since we first got our look at planets and cloud cover, and that is weather. Okay, so while this isn't the hurricane that we saw earlier, this shows off something even cooler, a dust storm on Mars. Blackrack posted several images and a couple videos showing off a dust storm front coming in on Mars. He mentions that they are also currently exaggerated in scale and can be toned down, but this is the coolest update we have gotten in months. And I have zero doubt now that we will also inevitably see some weather systems on other planets as well. These dust storms are also visible from orbit, and I can't wait to see what it's like to try and land through one of these, or have one of them move in over a craft that's already landed. I would really like to see these also give some kind of other effects like maybe increased winds that can cause damage to sensitive instruments or fragile crafts and parts, but this also opens the door for tons of science opportunities that have crafts and stations caught in storms. We could also see ourselves having to create storm chasing probes, there's just so much you could do with this. Like I said, this was by far the best and biggest month for updates so far, and I can't wait to see what we get next month.
Be sure to subscribe so we can follow along with the development of Kitten Space Agency together, along with some other games, game reviews, tutorials, and just about anything gaming. Also, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.